Hi everyone, today I'm going to give a quick initial review of the Goliath hot end and this is installed on a Voron 0.1. So I did a video a few years back about the realistic speeds that you can expect from a stock Voron 0.1. Basically I was topping out at around about 120 to 150 millimeters per second with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. I'm always trying to push more speed out of this. The bottlenecks that we come across with the stock setup was the cooling and also the flow rate of the Dragonfly BMO hot end. There's a few things that I did to try and help with that. I got the CHT nozzles and that did increase the flow rate of the, the nozzle. And I was able to then start to use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And then I could print at a 0.4 millimeter layer height. I always find that the increase in layer height is the thing that affects the print speed the most. So I pretty much print exclusively with 0.6 millimeter nozzles. But the issue that I found was that I was starting to hit the limits of the flow rate of that setup. With a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, 0.4 millimeter layer height, I found that I was printing at around about 80 to 120 millimeters per second. So how could I get around this? Well, that is where the high flow hot ends come into play. But before we carry on with the review, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. With state-of-the-art facilities to handle things like PCB etching, CNC machining, injection molding, and even 3D printing, PCBWay are committed to quality and affordable solutions for your PCB and manufacturing needs. PCBWay can handle it all from prototype to mass production. Visit PCBWay.com com today and check out their very competitive pricing and turnaround times with the voron zero you've got a few options for high flow hot ends the rapido you've got the uh, goliath and then also maybe something like the slice engineering now i was actually turned off of using slice engineering's products because there was a whole drama between goliath hot end and slice engineering and people trying to sue each other you can make up your own mind if you just have a quick search on google now you can't just stick a high flow hot end into the stock voron zero setup and that's because the if you look at the height of a standard afterburner setup mini afterburner you can see that it isn't long enough to accommodate the cooling at the point where these high flow hot ends terminate the plastic so you need to mod your hot end mount there's not really many options that i found that did support the goliath hot end the one that i did find was the rapid burner which you can see here it's really good because not only can it accommodate uh, high flow hot ends which means that you can print faster but it also accommodates larger cooling fans. If you look at the stock cooling fans that you get, these are like the little 3010, and these are, don't really put out enough airflow to be cooling at high flows. These 4010s, they can put out much more airflow, which is really good for the cooling. The only issue that you have with a Voron 0.1 setup is that the rapid burner, to accommodate the Goliath, you need to use the rapid burner version 8. This is only supported with Voron 0.2 X carriage. I didn't really want to take apart the whole carriage. I didn't want to mod it to make it into a Voron 0.2 version. So I've just tried to make it work with the Voron 0.1. I'm happy to say that you can use the rapid burner version 8, which will accommodate the Goliath hot end on a Voron 0.1 stock setup. The only issue that I've found is that because the, uh, the cabling for the heater coil is very big and bulky, what I found is that when it was homing, it was actually pushing up against this Z rail. So what I've done is I've just offset about eight millimeters with a little uh, block here, just so that then it hits the, the end stop uh, for the x-axis it does mean that i lose like eight millimeters but to be honest with you i'm never really printing the full size of this bed i'm always printing small things in the middle so i didn't really care about that but it is something to bear in mind another issue that you have with this mod is that as i showed the uh the hot end mount is is much bigger and it means that this cabling it is much higher which means that the top hat does not fit anymore you can see here for instance i need to get a 0.2 top hat mod for this to accommodate it. Printing the rapid burner mount is very easy. You can do it on your Voron. I decided to print the mount in my resin printer because I got some high temp resin and I was experimenting, but I found that it was a little bit too brittle when I was pushing in the, uh, the 4010 fans. So what I did is I mixed some Resi 1 F69 flexible resin with my frozen T300 high temp resin. I really do like what it does. It just makes pretty much all of these resin prints much more forgiving. I've got you know a lot of flex here on these parts and it just means that when I was pushing in the fans it can just kind of accommodate that stress. It makes it not so brittle which is important for this because getting it into place with the heater wires it's a little bit big and bulky with these like little thin walls it's just so easy to snap. 
I know most of you are probably going to print it on, on your Voron anyway, but I just thought I'd mention this, that you can print it on a resin printer and mix some flexible resin with it because it really does help. So let's talk about the actual Goliath hot end. I bought this with my own money from AliExpress. This is the Mellow uh, Goliath Air version. It comes pretty much pre-assembled. The heater wire is already coiled around the hot end. All you need to do is screw in the, the nozzle and mount it into your hot end mount of choice. So far, I've been really impressed with the performance of this thing. I was just doing some flow rate tests. And when you remember with the uh, the stock Dragonfly hot end, you're looking at about 15 to 20 millimeter uh, volumetric flow rate. With the CHT nozzle, that bumped it up to, I think it was about 25. I did from 35 to 57, and this didn't show any signs of under extrusion. The only issue that I come across when it was printing at 57 flow rate was that uh, it started to warp. And I think we're hitting the bottleneck again of cooling. So I don't think these 4010 fans are going to be powerful enough to be printing uh, flow rates any higher than this. But what does that mean in, in real world prints? Well, basically it means that I can now print 0.6 millimeter nozzle with a 0.4 millimeter layer height. And I can print at about 150 to 160 millimeters per second print speed. And what that results in is pretty much a 30 to 40% reduction in the print time, which is really all I care about. I don't really care about the quality, although the quality is very, very nice at those uh, those print speeds. This is a little Gridfinity trade I was printing. There are a few little sections of a little bit of under extrusion. I'm not exactly sure what that is because it's not under extrusion because the maximum flow rate of this part around the walls was about, I think it was about 47 or something like that. And as we've seen, I mean, you know, this can handle 57 very, very easily. So I would say for the Voron Zero, this is more than enough. I think this is really the end game hot end for this setup. Um, it is capable of printing, I think up to a hundred millimeter cubed flow rate, which is insane. And I think if you bump up the temperature of this thing, I think it goes up to like 500 or something like that. You can probably get those flow rates if needed. So I just wanted to make this quick video just to kind of give some insight into my experience with this and the setup that I've got, because I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people with a Voron 0.1 that are using this as a you know a printer for work there. They're making parts of it. They don't really want too much downtime with a printer like this. I certainly didn't when I'm working on projects. I didn't want to have to kind of mod the entire printer to accommodate a, a hot end like this. And I did want this hot end because it looks so cool and I do want to print faster always. And yeah, I'm happy to say that Stock Voron 0.1 with the stock uh, 0.1 carriage, you can fit the Rapid Burner version 8 and you can fit the Goliath hot end. And I've got a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 3, and that can accommodate the, uh, the heating of this so far. I haven't seen any issues with it. The only bit of aggro that I had with installing this thing is bending the heater wire. You can really bend this thing and you kind of have to wrap it back around on itself to go up and you need to make sure that it's not touching any of the 3D printed parts because it will melt them. I was a little bit worried. I was saying it was gonna snap as, as I was bending it, but yeah, it seems to be fine. One negative that I found with the hot end is that the silicone sock, the way that the Femista is positioned, you basically can't pull off the silicone sock because the Femista goes through the sock. So you, you know, if I wanted to take off this sock, I would literally have to take apart this entire mount and I'd have to get to the back of it because that's where the Femista is. I'd have to unscrew the Femista and then I could pull off the silicone sock. I appreciate that obviously you want the Femista in in that position of the of the hot end. I'm not sure ways around it, to be honest with you, the uh, way you could make it possible, but it just is a little bit annoying, you know, that the silicone sock is, is pretty much stuck on there unless you want to take off the whole entire thing. So I'd highly recommend this upgrade to anyone with a Voron 0 0.1 or a 0 0.2. Thank you to Vez3D for putting in all the work and just coming up with this design. It's absolutely amazing. Shouts out to Mellow for taking on the project and obviously making it available to everyone. The manufacturing of it is really nice and uh, I'm always impressed with the, the products that I get from Mellow. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help anyone out. I'll probably do another update review, maybe like next year and just see how this thing is printing. But I'm really impressed. I highly recommend it. That is it for today. I'll catch you all later.